not marks the 40th anniversary of Food Bank for NYC. It also marks the beginning of Women's History Month. At the Food Bank, it's one of the city's strongest chefs who makes it Women's mission. Women's History Month? Yeah, yeah listen, that's that too much. On the of New Yorkers every single day. As you're about to hear, Chef Sherry Jefferson owes her passion of cooking to the strongest woman in her life. Here's Eyewitness News reporter Kimberly Richardson. There you go. There you go. Think of them as the Formula One pit crew of the kitchen, moving with the same precision and care. Leading this team here at Food Bank for New York City, Chef Sherry. I love food with all my heart and everything that goes with it. All the hard work cooking roughly 1,000 meals each day for those who need it most. For this single mother of two, it's trying to the cord. And me, I mean, there were days my two daughters would eat and I'm like, okay, let's just hope they didn't finish that because if one of them left something, that was my food. Her passion for food, well, her mom told her then nine-year-old Sherry to cook dinner for the family of eight. She told me exactly what to do. Here, put your water on. You're going to put some oil in it, and you're going to don't forget the salt. The spaghetti and meat sauce was a hit. My father was just in awe, and it was there ever since. Now I want broccoli. What followed? Her own catering business. And then on her 50th birthday, Sherry had an idea. I came home with this great epiphany. Hey, I'm going to culinary school. In 2016, she graduated. Where is she? I can't. Which one is her? <laughs> Wait. <laughs> oh, there she go. I see her. Stop oh. hold back. That chill. I don't chill. Go ahead, man. <laughs> see, like she having a great life, man. She having Bro, a great I see, like she was sweet. You seen her mom and daddy? Yeah, man. She she she's having a, a fantastic life, man. If she lived, if she was in a, a sun country like Haiti or fucking. Nigeria, man, yo, she would have to come here to have this. Yes. She would have to leave and come here. Yes. She's already here. So she's got a good man. She's already here. <laughs> I promise you, she didn't even, you know, there's a lot of, you know, I, I guarantee you, she didn't just up and just have this little situation going on without a little assistance, you know? <laughs> Somebody paid for that culinary school. No, I fucked the culinary school. I'm talking about this whole feeding homeless and shit. Well, I was wondering, she must be feeding white people because that was baked chicken. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. That used to be the... Y'all don't eat baked chicken. No, baked chicken. Oh, yes, they do. You got to stand. Mm -hmm. I, I hate baked chicken because, when you know, Sun Sisters at one point thought that baked chicken, it was kind of like using air fryers now back in the day. You know. would be good, yeah, I thought it's you immediately salt. lost your you card. You baking a chicken. <laughs> no, they bake some chicken, man. And now, it, trust me, that's how they that's how they call themselves healthy without going to the gym. Yeah. Um. Salute to salute to these. Like, what a great life this woman's having, man. Waited from the Institute of Culinary Education, classically trained in French, Italian, and Asian cuisine. Sherry was named head chef here five years ago, which she says still surprises some in what is a male-dominated industry. I don't have a problem with that. I really don't. I prefer my work speaking for me. I prefer uh, putting everything into this food that we cook here. Titles are great, you know, they're great. At the end of the day, I'm still Sherry. Even when Chef isn't physically here in the kitchen, she's in touch with her team, guiding them every step of the way. It is a true partnership. I know that whatever it is that God had planned for me or in store for me, which I didn't know before, I know now. Salute to that sister. She'll probably get mugged on her way home. Salute to that sister. That never happens in New York. Good for her. Women never get mugged in New York. Now to breaking news this? in Midtown. A woman, a woman randomly stabbed on a busy street and her attacker on the run. New York cops say a stranger walked up to the 61-year-old victim on 57th Street, that's near 8th Avenue, and then stabbed her twice. Eyewitness News reporter Safan Kim is at the scene and Safan... Well, it doesn't usually happen, Bill. It happens sometimes. You can dig up and scratch deep enough. You can find one case. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's just it's sometimes. But but normally women don't get mugged 
on the streets in certain areas. Um, yeah. Up to the 61-year-old victim on 57th Street, that's near 8th Avenue, and then stabbed her twice. Eyewitness News reporter Safan Kim is at the scene. And Safan, what can you tell us? Well, shot in, Bill, this was a random slashing here in the middle of the city. There's blood splattered on the sidewalk here. We're not going to show you. See, I told you it was random. It wasn't even like a mugging. <laughs> she just walked up and stabbed her. Yeah, man, it wasn't. Yeah, it still wasn't no and I should tell y'all, some men ain't got no thought process behind that type of crime. This is just, oh shit, there's a person <laughs> that's vulnerable, a weak. Yeah, and it, yeah. He wouldn't, he wouldn't have ran up on me or something like that. Did that? No, oh, or me. We too yeah. big. We yeah. too boisterous. It ain't none of that going on, bro. Yeah, I mean, all he, right. He, I gotta cut out of here. My headphones are about to die. All right, man. Take so, it easy, man. Thanks he, for putting up with me, everybody. Yeah, salute, salute. He 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 walked up. He walked up on a sixty-one-year-old woman and just stabbed her in front of all. Like, and I'm in Manhattan right now. And man, and I tell you, it's a lot of people on the streets. <laughs> <laughs> so when you when you from like other cities, you know what I'm saying? You don't really understand. Like you could lose. And I've been here a lot. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. Man, it's a lot. Like every street. Like here in Harlem. Mm -hmm. Every street is fucking. The foot traffic is insane, and no one's stopping in any of the stores. They're all going somewhere else. It's just insane. <laughs> it's just <laughs> always people just moving and shit. Yeah, and it's like the thought of like the thought of picking your nose to make you self conscious because you think somebody will see you. This motherfucker ran on a 61-year-old lady and stabbed him. I started giving her that work. You, you wouldn't even want to fucking scratch your ass in front of these people. <laughs> <laughs> this motherfucker stabbed a 61-year-old woman in front of all these people. You oh, gliders. Let me tell you, gliders, you cannot fix that. Go get a thousand degrees and think that you can fix that because you got to that you're wasting your time. Yeah, that's not a thing. <laughs> you can't fix that. Uh -huh. What's up, your future president? What's happening, man? <laughs> no solutions. Yeah, your 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 mic is jacked, yo. You sound like R two D two, man. That, but I'm going to step out of the way so you can see the large police presence here on 57th Street. According to police, a 61-year-old woman was walking across 57th Street when a man stabbed her twice in her right shoulder. She did not know this man. Unclear at this hour if he said anything to her before or after the slashing her. It happened right in front of Brooklyn Diner on 57th Street between 7th and 8th Avenues around 3.40 this afternoon. She was rushed to Mount Sinai West in stable condition. We spoke with a construction worker who helped render aid to the victim. Let's listen to what he had to say. We noticed that she was bleeding on her arm. So, I mean, I actually gave her like a cloth in order to tie it so the blood would stop. And then uh, she said the guy just started running off the highway. Oh, it's crazy. You know, New, York, New York City is not safe. It's not, it's not safe. You know, it's, uh, it's just random. We're working and you, you don't expect that to happen. So it's pretty bad. It could have been somebody's mother, you know. Uh, police say that suspect then fled westbound on foot across 57th Street toward 8th Avenue. He was wearing an orange hooded sweatshirt. That is the most we have as far as the description goes. Sources on scene here say they have just begun looking at images of the suspect. Christ, man. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> all the time that attack there's, there's no time where you can get used to that <laughs> no like it's hey. weird that they try to make it like that but i mean like god damn they're just stabbing motherfuckers and running off yeah man it's just yeah man and you can't you can't oh god Still a lot of questions, of course, at this time, but police say this tragedy unfolded here in this fish market last night when the two brothers walked into the store and some kind of fight happened between them and the employee here. One thing I'll tell you is this, I love my babies. And this guy, whoever he was, he took my baby from me.
father of brothers, 25-year-old Malik Burrell and 29-year-old Robert Burrell, says he's in shock and at a loss at why someone would hurt his sons over an alleged argument. Whatever the altercation was about, I don't know, but I know that man came from behind that counter and, and attacked him. And he stabbed one of my sons to death. Police say Tuesday night around 9.45 p.m., a 34-year-old employee of the Express Fish Market on St. Nicholas Place came out from behind. Oh, wow, St. Nick. That's not far from I'm at the counter and mm. stabbed the two brothers in the torso after some sort of dispute. 25-year-old. What do you think happened to you, um, guys? Oh, we know what happened. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's order wasn't right. Somebody said some slick. Somebody said some slick back. Shit escalated quickly, and daggers were pulled. Yeah, I know where you work. Yeah, yeah, some shit like that. Like, bitch, nigga, I kill you. Like, one of them probably said, "You don't know me. I'll kill you. I'll do this to you." And the other motherfucker. They thinking because he at work that he's yeah. not a complete fool. No, he <laughs> just has a job because he's not good at selling drugs. So well, he just came home with some shit. Yeah, he just came home. You know what I'm saying? It's just really <laughs> in the randomness. Like just because a black, just because a son man has a job, does not remove him from street shit. Right. You know what I'm saying we're not connected to drug dealing that closely. You know what I mean about that? Then he said something that they had. Absolutely didn't think it was gonna lead to that because he was at work and they thought there was two of them. And he was like, Oh, I got all of that work for you boys today. Once he realized they weren't armed, oh yeah, yeah. it was all the oh, crack. Yeah. So little boy Kachina, man, he says Heimlich was a groomer. All you need is a running uppercut to the sternum, not a bunch of grab ass. <laughs> Respect Ock Nation, man. You a fool, man. Oh shit. Hey, do me a favor though. Since you going, since you right around the corner, man, you gotta go get a plate from there tomorrow and let everybody know what it's eating like. What? The little fish place, bro. Oh, I ain't going nowhere near that. <laughs> <laughs> that motherfucker's still in there. They ain't talking about arresting him. He's still working there, man. I ain't going to there, man. Shit. Fuck that, man. Oh, they ain't gonna arrest him. I don't know. We will see, man. He said, uh, where am I? Let's find out. Let's find out. He said, living in NYC is no surprise for random attacks like that to happen, especially in Manhattan. Wow. Malik Burrell and 29-year-old Robert Burrell says he's in shock and at a loss at why someone would hurt his sons over an alleged argument. Whatever the altercation was about, I don't know. But I know that man came from behind that counter and, and attacked him. And he stabbed one of my sons to death. Police say Tuesday night around 9.45 p.m., a 34-year-old employee of the Express Fish Market on St. Nicholas Place came out from behind the counter and stabbed the two brothers in the torso after some sort of dispute. 25-year-old Malik did not survive. His older brother is in stable condition at Harlem Hospital. Burrell says he thinks his sons were profiled by the employee from the start and disputes the claim that the argument was over a possible stealing. Other neighbors here agree. You see those brothers every day. They're so polite, respectful, and I know they ain't out here stealing nothing. He adds that profile. So the person who stabbed him was either a white Latino or a white person, man, a glider, man. Definitely not a glider because it's not it's not big enough for a glider. Yeah, it would be a huge story. It's this not big enough for yeah, life. That's too fat. It was a um a um a pasty um um burrito. <laughs> yeah, or <laughs> it might have been a dark um burrito, but they knew he was on burrito. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And and are you ruling out stealing? Because they said this woman says they oh, never steal nothing. No, no, they were beefing, and he came around a corner. No, this is this is melanated ang. This is melanated energy that the argument was over a possible stealing. Other neighbors here agree. You see those brothers every day. They're so polite, respectful, and I know they ain't out here stealing nothing.
He adds that today would have been his son Malik's birthday. Even more tragic, he says this is the second son he's lost this year. My kids was wonderful kids. I raised them right. What? <laughs> Wowzers. It's the second son he lost this, this year. Man. Why? How did this go into a deeper level? Yeah, we can hear you, man. I, 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 I bet that way was off. They try, they try to get the, you know, that fish that they were trying to get, you know, trying to get more fish than, uh, than what oh, they were yeah, trying to pay yeah. for. Yeah, man, this it. When you, you, you gave the last person more fish than me, man. <laughs> it was just, it was a fish sandwich, and they put like maybe it was something fish. stupid. We know that. <laughs> now we need to figure out about this other death. We need to do a deep dive into their family. You understand what I'm saying? I mean, they're just a bunch of great guys, man. Great guys that don't steal. <laughs> yeah, exactly. His birthday. Even more tragic, he says this is the second son he's lost this year. My kids was wonderful kids. I raised them right. My mom raised them right. We got a whole village that raised all our kids. Hmm. The employee is now in custody with police. We've also tried to reach out to somebody from the market to try to get their side of what happened last night, and we haven't been able to speak with anyone directly. Okay, the employee is in custody. I might slide through there then, man. Okay, as long as Thank you. Thank you, bro. They act like the employee just, just, you know, just randomly just saying, dang, I, I, I just pick these um, two people. You pick this one guy, like, I'm going to stab you right, right there. Yeah, I mean, most employees ain't trying to stab somebody on the clock, though. <laughs> a violent and deadly scene at a fish market in Harlem. Police say it started when a customer tried stealing a container of shrimp from the... Okay, so he tried to... That'll be on video if they have cameras in there. More info. Try to steal some shrimp, man. Hey, man, listen, man. I, I believe that, man. <laughs> I just believe that. Okay, man. okay. Think about it. Do they mean stealing it like we try to run out or like, fuck you, I'll take this shit. <laughs> but I feel like it was more, fuck you, I'll take this shit. Yeah, it could all like. How that. you gonna get a container of shrimp from these motherfuckers, man? Like, it's a restaurant. Where, like, they just got shrimp laying out? Well, they might have a refrigerator or something with it. I don't know. Or, or or maybe you pay at a one station and you maybe you get your right food. right that's where the wait the wait probably was off and they were like no nah, I ain't paying for that I ain't paying for that stuff you know and man, we need to walk off with investigations in this bitch man you got to get on the scene bro you got to go on that bitch with your oh, camera man. and go live oh, bro questions. <laughs> Get to the bottom of this. Yes, yeah, we're investigating. Violent and deadly scene at a fish market in Harlem. Police say it started when a customer tried stealing a container of shrimp from the store on St. Nicholas Place near West 155th Street. The situation then escalated into a violent altercation when the customer later returned. Okay, I ain't nowhere near here. I'm on, I'm near St. Nick, not St. St. Not St. Nicholas Place. I think I'm in St. Nick something. Maybe St. Nicholas Avenue or something, but I'm not near St. Nicholas Place violent altercation when the customer later returned with his brother an employee stabbed the men killing one of them but he not returned the oh so he got out the son man whatever happened he left and came back with another guy yeah i'm, I'm so I'm, so is the uh, employee gonna be in trouble because he came back with uh with his brother yeah, man, the police yeah. talking this bullshit about thieving. He came back talking cash money, and he said, "Well, fuck it, since you up on me like that." Yeah, this is. I think. I think the police still gonna be unless public outcry. But this is because that's the only thing that got Jose Alba off. Alba got off because of public outcry. You know. Hey, somebody in the chat say the man name is Junior Aquino Hernandez. Yeah, it's all on. Yeah, they got it in the chat. They got the name, bro. Yeah, it was definitely like the only who else would stand up to a same man other than on Brito. Yeah, so you say his name is what? In the chat, they say his name. What they say? Junior Aquino Hernandez. So you know they'll stand up to the deck. You know the Umbritos ain't scared of us like that. Hey, he knew. He, he probably knew where all the uh, right spots to hit too. In New York, in New York, 
Listen, man, in New York, they run the jails. They run the jails, those on burritos. Uh -huh. The top blood gang members over there are on burritos. The top crip. You saw about that crip, what's his name? Blue Boy? Mm -mm. Oh, the, the, the top I crip. I thought I heard the name somewhere just like yeah, in passing. He just came home. He, just came home. He, he was the top, the highest ranking crip in New York is a is a is a is a bus boy on Brito. I'm talking about I ain't talking about a son. What like a, a for real for real on Brito. You look like a, a bus boy. You look like <laughs> a um a goddamn day laborer. And then the top um blood is a guy named um Magoo, who's like a um a Puerto Rican cat. But he's not he ain't sunny, he's just a Puerto Rican. It's not that shocking because some people are only deep like that, like in the south. You know what I'm saying? They kind of creep up into that Maryland, D.C. because that's because of it. But for the most part, they're not deep like that. New York is 30% selling, my man. That's what I'm saying. They're not. But uh, is it? Yeah. How, how many? How many? How many? Yeah, it's 30%. Huh? It's 30%. Okay, so how many on Britos, though? It's about 30% too. Maybe you know what I'm it's equal. Door on St. Nicholas Place here. near West 155th Street. The situation then escalated into a violent altercation when the customer later returned with his brother. An employee stabbed the men, killing one of them. But now the family of the men are questioning the police and what investigators say happened. Crystal Cranmore is in Harlem with more. He was on the floor and Bobby was bleeding all over the place. The family of 29-year-old Robert and 25-year-old Malik Burrell. Tell him, keep your eyes open. <laughs> Outraged and heartbroken after pre-birthday preparations turned deadly outside this fish market in Harlem Tuesday night. I had my whole family, my granddaughter, everybody sitting in there waiting for them to come back from the store with the daggone whatever the food they were supposed to be cooking, and, and they never made it back. Robert Burrell Sr. tells me Bobby and Malik went to the store to buy fish to celebrate Malik's birthday today. But according to police, the men reportedly attempted to steal food from the store. At some point, an argument turns violent, with the store employee allegedly stabbing both men in the torso. Like a machete. Pedro Lassa says he was there as workers pushed the men out the business. It started from the inside. You see, you follow the drops of blood. It goes around like a circle. Both men were taken to the hospital where police say Malik died from his injuries. Tonight, this family is grieving, hoping to set the record straight. My sons don't have no reason to take anything. They got money. They have money. I have money. You know what I'm saying? They have jobs. My son was a beautiful kid. Shut up. Get out of here with that. Just like the, hey, hey, uh, just like how do you, you know, you they, uh, you they get off work, and they see that dog on uh, post uh, that mail. Uh, that box right there at that door, just get mm -hmm. it. It's no yeah. different. Exactly, exactly. Well, um, I got an update on this one. Charges Damn. dropped. Charges dropped. Murder charges dropped against the um guy the fish store. So they dropped yeah, this came um, after a brawl. Junior Aquino Hernandez, thirty-four was instead arraigned only on the charge of first-degree assault. Okay, for the main one. But he got first-degree assault. That's only because he's out there in, in, you know, Liberalville. If he was down here, they probably would have, you know what I'm saying, he never would have went to jail. You want to like, see a picture? You want to see a picture of him? Yeah, yeah, put it up. Let's see. Let's Even see for picture. Liberalville, that sounds like pretty light charges. Not, now you got to move now. I ain't gotta go nowhere. Ain't nobody gonna do nothing. Yeah. Well, right from the jump, he had the pretty the good ones that case. would do something. Just got, just got stabbed. Up. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you're right. You're right. He ain't got to worry about none of these bitch ass motherfuckers. That's it. The message, man. The message. Been <laughs> yeah, he don't play the fucking radio. <laughs> message has been sick, man. This is right here, man. That's Jose and Queen, though, man. I told you, be oh a Mark Brito. Listen, that's, listen, <laughs> listen, man. Especially up there, where they, you know, they do a lot of mixing up there, man. Up there, it just, it's, yeah, it's different. Everything. Yeah, everything mixed up. Over hey, there. I believe it's a Brito. Look at his leather jacket, man. Yeah, definitely. He got a when, Brito style. But when Afro you seen Brito, a sun man wear a jacket like that, and he working, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like, man, I, gotta, I gotta be here working and stuff, man. Y'all coming bothering me. Yeah, man. Hey, no, no cap. 
when I went to get my pizza with downstairs, it was one fucking sun man darker than me and one a little bit lighter than me. And neither one of them spoke English. And yeah, they, they're, they're different. It's a different thing. They all play baseball, though. Yeah, and I they, say, is this um, guy Dominican? They were the um, ooh, they were the door dashers. And he was like, I trained, I trained him. And I was like, what the fuck is he He's like, I trained him. I said, oh, because I was wondering why it was two of them. He's like, he was like, I'm training him. And I, neither one of them spoke English. And it was like two sudden men. And I was like, damn, that's crazy. You can't speak a lick of English. Trust me, when they saw him, they saw, they were like a piranha who saw another piranha. They thought it was all the same thing. That's why they came back with their energy. Because he said, they probably understand a little bit of Spanish up there. You know what I'm saying? Like, you could call a motherfucker puto and they know what it is. Like, you you know? Yeah, that, that motherfucker came back up there. They got worked. Yeah, he said, oh, fuck it. It's like that. And it's up, it's up. It was up. And they got, and listen, man, that all that sun shit, all that thinking you tough and shit, that shit don't work against a motherfucker that just knows how to kill. Like Alba, Jose Alba. And these 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 on Britos right here, right, they know right. The knife, man, they know to work you over. Yeah, I mean, first of all, to 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 hit two motherfuckers with a knife and fall back, you got a different kind of heart. That's up close and personal. That means you shut the scene up. That means after you got the jug and everybody I, fell I, back, I, like, ooh, he's I wild. You, you got to keep one of these because if you if <laughs> one of these will keep. You safe, no doubt. I'm no. I'm saying like one of these. Uh, you got to keep this at all times when you like this. This supposed to be like a um a pen, or <laughs> like you know, say your ID. You must always have one of these. They're very light. It don't take much to carry, and it'll keep a nigga off you. 